a place called Manitoba. Now, just what is Manitoba? It's a province in Canada, the Keystone province, right in the center, and it's becoming the holiday target for more and more vacationers every year. It's only 400 miles from Minneapolis or Regina, less than 1,000 miles from Toronto, Chicago, St. Louis, Kansas City, Des Moines, Omaha, Denver, Calgary, Edmonton. Manitoba is still the center, whether you come from Montreal or New York, Vancouver or San Francisco, by plane, train, bus, or car. Americans arriving at the international border find that crossing the line is surprisingly easy. And uh, by a happy coincidence, this is Mr. Morgan and family about to enter Manitoba at one of the ports of entry. Now, each of the Morgans has a different here at the border and give you a preview of what lies ahead of them. The city of Winnipeg is a good place to start, the capital of Manitoba and Canada's fourth largest city. Winnipegers are justly proud of their fine buildings, wide streets and beautiful parks. In Winnipeg's twin city of St. Boniface is the St. Boniface Basilica, standing on the site of the first Christian church in the West. Figures from the colorful past. A statue commemorates the first white men to set foot here, French fur traders and missionaries. The French remained when the English came, and today St. Boniface is the largest French Canadian city outside Quebec. Winnipeg's old Fort Garry Gate is all that remains of the fur trading fort from which the city grew. Winnipeg is now a great metropolitan center, yet in the fine hotels and in the modern motels and cabins, you'll still find the friendly hospitality that characterized the pioneer past. In one of many excellent restaurants, a vacationing family gets set to enjoy a meal of the province's culinary specialty, Winnipeg Gold Eye, a tempting fish dish fresh from Lake Winnipeg. At the zoo in City Park, it's feeding time too. Probably there's a sign reading, don't feed the animals, but of course the bear can't read. The city's bill of fare for visitors includes plenty of sporting excitement. Horse racing fans can watch the ponies go by. Professional football with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Baseball with the Gold Eyes. The Scottish Highland Games, one of many colorful special events that enliven the summer for the whole family. In downtown Winnipeg, you can visit the modern shops and great department stores. Here, fine English silverware may catch the eye. Colorful Canadian blankets and British woolens. The city is a fashion center for furs. And visitors will find a wide selection of beautiful English bone china. Prices on both Canadian and Commonwealth goods will be well within your budget. These gay square dancers are Manitoba made. The work of the province's craftsmen is displayed in the handicraft and souvenir shops. And what more fitting souvenir than this model Red River cart, complete with ox, as used by the early settlers. The Red River cart has justly won a place of honor in the city's museums. Reminders of Manitoba's colorful history bring back the days of Indians, settlers, and fur traders. A symbol of early settlement, the venerable Countess of Dufferin was the first locomotive in the West. Although resting in honorable retirement, the iron horse still makes mighty exciting imaginary journeys for the small fry. Only a 30-minute drive from Winnipeg takes us to Lower Fort Garry, the only stone fort
Yet this is glamour that reaches out to every woman's everyday life. To well-dressed people hurrying down a busy city street, or to the peaceful atmosphere of a quiet Sunday in a small town. Wherever you are, whoever you are, one of the fastest growing industries in Canada is contributing to your daily life. It's the business of what you wear. Fashion, a big business here in Manitoba, where a new... From beautiful models to active young teenagers, from matrons to business girls, sportsmen too. Yes, even the driver on that bus. They all wear made in Manitoba fashions, as do thousands of other Canadians all across the land. The next time you're shopping for clothing, whether it's a high style women's suit, dashing sportswear or work clothing, be sure to look for a Made in Manitoba label. It's your assurance of a quality garment from the new center of fashion, Manitoba. Man has put nature to work in the White Shell Reserve, harnessing the surging energy of the water at the Seven Sisters Falls power station. Here are generated tremendous amounts of electricity, serving Winnipeg, the capital of Manitoba, which was our next destination. And we spun along the scenic highway just a few minutes, it seemed, until we were entering Canada's fourth largest city. A city so intriguing we had to go sightseeing even before we registered at our hotel. In the old days, not so long ago, really, pioneers drove their ox carts over the flat prairie beside the famous Red River to reach the trading post on the river's banks. Today, the broad main streets of Winnipeg are laid out along the trails left by those storied Red River carts. Modern buildings with a distinctive touch of old world architecture stand where once was nothing but the vast hunting grounds of the Indians. And the flag flying in the breeze atop many buildings reminded us we were in Canada, where the famous Northwest Mounted Police had pushed law and order across the wilderness nearly a century ago.